Greetings to you, beloved, and welcome to this video. Um, this is the third vlog regarding the topic uh, with the question, is everyone equal or not? So let's continue and <clears throat> I think that we will also finalize this topic with this vlog uh, and we then come to the conclusion, so to speak. So let's continue. This was the last slide. And we already went through this one. So let's continue. So this is the four main factors that influence our will, not even influence, but also determines even our will and our choices in life. So let's see what's happening with the name translated God. <coughs> So, our choices are under continuous influence of these four main factors. And the question is, are all these factors accidental? Are they by accident? Of course not. Never. It's not the case. So, let's look at the word God. The Greek, the Greek word translated God is Theos. And that means placer. And what does it mean? That the God places everything on our path in life. Everything. So if you are walking your, your path, your journey in life, so of course every circumstance that, is, uh, that you encounter in life that will influence your choice based on your mindset, based on your upbringing, based on your DNA, etc., etc. So, of course, God determines all these factors. So, it's not possible to have a free will. Yes, a will, but never free. Never free. Let's look at the Hebrew. The word is El. The Hebrew word is El translated God in the Hebrew scriptures and that means subjector so he is the one that subjects everything to his purpose that's the whole thing so L can be uh, referring to more uh, beings also creatures because even a judge can also be a subjector because you are uh, as a, for instance, as a, uh, a, a defendant, for instance, you can be subject to a judge in, in terms of a judicial uh, proclamation as an example. So this is what it means, L. He is the subjector, of course. So all these factors in our life are placed by God to accomplish, and that's very important to keep in mind, huh? to accomplish his loving purpose with us all, every other individual, also non-humans, of course. So the Almighty God literally directs everything from the greatest Milky Way to the smallest atomic particle. That's who God is. That's his sovereignty. He is enormous. Let's continue. How does he direct all things? So now we're going to contemplate his method. So the, the red thread uh, that he uses in his strategy. The essence is contrast. It's contrast. So it's about a fundamental part of God's plan to create opposites. So if you create opposites within a certain uh, continuum, so to speak, then it causes things to move. One of the nice examples of that, and everyone who had a relationship or has a relationship with the other sex knows about this, and then I'm talking about men and women, of course, that creates movement. It creates misunderstandings. It creates effort 
to try to understand the other sex if you know what i mean how the other sex is thinking it creates um contemplation again movement in every sense of the word so that is the that is the goal the the in-between goal so to speak to create contrast and of course the most encompassing contrast is that between good and evil and the intention of god and also his hidden intention in the garden of eden was that people would get knowledge of good and evil it's about the knowledge of good and evil because one time in the future evil will not be necessary anymore remember that evil will not be necessary anymore when god will uh, um, accomplish his his purpose with creation then evil has done its job right it has performed its function so what remains what remains is the knowledge of evil remains so evil will not be necessary anymore and that will be done away with but the knowledge of good and evil remains why is it so important look at this these two knowledge of good and knowledge of evil always go together knowledge of good comes only through knowledge of evil that's the whole thing it comes thanks to knowledge of evil because knowledge of good ultimately results in knowledge of the god who god is his goodness his mercy his grace and then it will uh, um, it will result in us to recognize his goodness to acknowledge his grace to appreciate his mercy and to give thanks for that if you know what i mean only by knowledge of good of evil can we appreciate knowledge of good man is a relative being that's why we can only recognize and uh, acknowledge and appreciate by knowing or experiencing the opposite that's the whole thing so only in this way we finally come to the full awareness of god's unconditional love and that is the whole thing because his purpose is to have a what was the what was the word a mutual laughing relationship with his creation it is mutual but if it is to be mutual then it also has to be from creation to creator you see the point and that can only be when we know of his goodness of his grace of his love and we can also return it that's the whole thing contrast is used by god in such a way as a method so that man gets to know him in his love and his sovereignty also god's wisdom never fails of course not and in his wisdom he incorporated contrast in his strategy and his approach so oppositions are still needed for now let's look at some um, opposites right uh, some examples as i already mentioned man versus woman that's obvious so each within their specific frame of thoughts and processes because i can guarantee you the whole thinking world of man differs greatly from the thinking world of women it's it's uh, the difference is enormous and it's about uh getting to know not to think as a woman if you're a man and vice versa no it's to understand the fact 
that the woman thinks differently than you think or vice versa obviously that is important and then to um, uh, how do you say that to also be empathic and try to place yourself as much as possible in the other shoes to uh, to appreciate how they think so this is important and again I as I already mentioned it creates movement that's the whole um, that's the whole purpose of that also that's a big one life versus death and of course it's usually the idea people have about these two concepts however if you have the wrong concept of death being uh, living in another way as a spirit without a body then you have a wrong concept that's the whole um, that's what I want to say about that uh, if you if you um, think about that as being dead really dead uh, being non-existent then you have the right concept of death and that's the scriptural concept of that so keep that in mind of course as we already discussed chosen versus not chosen for whatever purpose that may be it's the general opposite of each other how about this one poverty versus wealth i mean this causes huge injustice in the world and this injustice i guarantee you from scripture will be set straight by god because of his righteousness he will set every injustice he will correct and he will correct it abundantly he will do it richly and everyone who suffered in this world because of other human beings to uh, taking advantage of you for instance it will be um, it will be reckoned to you and to the other who took advantage of you that's a guarantee it will be set straight and completely straight everything will be paid back in full that you can count on it's very important because then you don't have to worry anymore if you see all this injustice around you so that's why i just uh, wanted to mention that also the concept of minority versus majority uh, and of course you know that a uh, natural tendency of humans is often directed towards the opinion of the majority right i remember when i uh, um, uh, proclaimed uh, my uh, new faith so to speak years ago already to people i uh, i often heard a certain argument and the argument of Christians eh, from Christians the argument was so you mean to tell me that all the hundreds of millions of Christians are wrong all those great men and women of God all those big names they are wrong they are not saved are you crazy that's what they used to think uh, used to say to me and then I could only look at them and say yes they are wrong because there's only one touchstone and that is scripture rightly divided or correctly cut that is the only relevant and uh, uh, how do you say that uh, uh, valuable touchstone that's the only one that counts so yes if the majority is not according to scripture correctly cut then the majority is wrong also those men and women of god so of course also besides these uh, opposites also numer numerous other natural and sensory issues like 
light versus dark and hot versus cold and high versus low pressure sad versus happy and i mean you can come up with endless opposites you know what i mean by contrast and that's all designed and created by the god the sovereign god so let's now uh, come to the conclusion of this question is everyone equal or not if we look at uh, God's strategy within the framework of God's strategy of course there is a clear distinction so so people are very unequal or unequal of course or not even people but also creatures even non-human creatures there they are unequal there is also an order and a, a kind of a range so that's clear right we already established that um, people get to because that's the purpose and eh? there is a clear distinction so that people get to know god's great love and give them all the glory for it the wise I'm talking about creatures now the wise according to human standards let's let's confine ourselves to humans then according to human standards will be ashamed when they see how the stupid according to human standards are exalted by God and how the stupid will lead and teach the wise because that's what will happen think about this method god is always he will, he has always worked like that look at his son his uh, his his only begotten son i mean he kept him incognito <laughs> he made sure that the religious leaders of israel did not recognize him but who recognized him very simple men and women men and women who are who were like um, nothing according to the standards of their society they were sinners they were um, tax collectors they were fishermen lowly lowly people that's uh, who god uh, revealed jesus real identity too you see the point it's always been that way also in the hebrew time uh in the the time of the prophets it was the prophets who, who got the revelations of god not the wise not the religious leaders of their time no always the prophets and the prophets always were strange men always and sometimes women so they had to do stupid things god instructed them to do strange things in the eye of their respective societies that's god's way of working and that has always been the same in this eon i could say let's let's uh, let's talk about this eon it has always been the same and that's why ecclesiastes uh, often talks about there is nothing new under the sun remember that's wisdom if you understand so is this all the conclusion no because there's also another part and that is in reality i mean who god really is in his character of course obviously and that's how i started as well everyone is equal of course so god has no preferences in reality so when he has accomplished his goal his his purpose with all of creation there will not be uh, inequality or distinction anymore none whatsoever that's of course that's obvious so uh, let's finish this up because otherwise it will be a bit long as well also every difference every contradiction like i already said every enemy will be done away with 
when it is no longer needed. That's the whole um, that's the whole way that God is working. It will be done away with. You can rest assured about that. So God's strategy is only the means to achieve his purpose of love with all of creation. No one accepted. No one excluded. Why is God's purpose all inclusive? Because he loves all creatures equally. And I hope you came to the same conclusion by now. I thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.